French and U.S. legislation is colliding over a case of online hate speech. Twitter, an American company, has been ordered by a French court to reveal personal data of users posting anti-Semitic messages. Artist Maria Finoshina examines the case to see if the concept of free speech should have different boundaries in different countries. Two democracies stumbling over the concept of freedom. A French court has called on Twitter to help censor hate speech on the website in France because it violates its laws. But Twitter is an American company and the American constitution sets no limits to freedom of expression. Given that the, the court, the French court has required that Twitter do that, um, the question is, how can the French court enforce this judge, this decision? When the Union of Jewish Students of France took the issue to a Paris court in October, they wanted to stop a wave of anti-Semitic messages posted under the hashtag Un bon juif, a good Jew. It was the third most popular tagged subject at the time. The number of insulting jokes reached thousands. But these people, all of whom have at least once been attacked for being a Jew, also wanted to punish those responsible. We don't want to prosecute or chase these people, but just to draw the attention of the authorities to such cases and let them decide whether or not it's a case of racism. Twitter agreed to remove offensive content, but the authors were anonymous and unpunished. So French Jews brought the popular microblogging site to trial. The court decision in January asked the company to divulge the names of people behind the tweets. The fight against racism has nothing to do with the violation of freedom of expression. It is an American concept and it cannot be applied in France in the way it is understood in the US. We just wanted this part of our life to obey this country's legislation which prohibits public racism. But not everyone agrees. If freedom is limited, they say, it's no longer freedom. Jeremy, of Jewish origins himself, is one of them. He says greater liberty shouldn't bring more restrictions, but a different approach to controlling the Internet. You have Twitter, a private company, that may be acting as a judge, deciding what is legal and what is not, and removing content, which is censorship. So I agree that this content should be combated, but I don't agree that the private company such as Twitter should implement privatized censorship of free speech online. This is a major risk today. This story has sparked broader discussion over violations of freedom and privacy in France. There are at least 190 pan-European laws allowing authorities access to Internet users' personal information kept in web storages and surveillance. It's not like we'll be like China tomorrow, but we are concerned that France, the US, Britain and some other democratic powers are helping to produce internet surveillance technologies for China, Syria, Libya, Egypt and Tunisia. Well, if they allow the governments of these countries to use it against their people, is there any guarantee that France will not use it against its own people one day? This Twitter dispute has gone far beyond the borders of the US and France and any agreement reached will affect all subsequent cases. Skeptics warn that France may be happy to let personal freedom slide. Liberté, égalité, fraternité. Liberty, equality, fraternity. France's most famous motto and three pillars the country has been resting on since the French Revolution. Today they face new challenges, with racism being one of them, and it has many fearing whether both intolerance itself and the fight against it may see those hard-fought principles swept aside.